Hi guys, thanks for joining me once again today. This is Peter, you're watching Thailand Bound. And this gentleman with me here, I'm hoping we're gonna see quite a lot of him on this channel. I'm planning to do a series of videos. This is Peter, he's with a company called Thai Legal Protection. Uh, he's lived in uh, Thailand a long, long time and he has a company that specialises basically in getting guys like me out of trouble. Why don't you tell us a little, good to meet you first of all Peter, thanks good for to meet you, doing it. And, and just real quick before Peter speaks, it is a Sunday so I've managed to grab him for half an hour because he's a very, very busy man, not in the office today. So uh, again, Peter, thanks for joining me today. Why don't you tell everybody exactly what it is your company does? Okay, so like, like Peter said, uh, I'm from Thai Legal Protection and we offer a legal membership okay. service where our members can call in at any time and uh, get legal advice on various topics. Yeah. Uh, we also have a 24-hour emergency line. And uh, what I'm here to do today is kind of compile all of the, the stuff that our members call in about and try to help your subscribers and your viewers um, kind of learn something about uh, what they should look for when they rent a condo so these are common questions and issues that, right, right, that right. a lot of people have when they come here yeah. and want to rent or, you know. Sure, sure. Rent. So uh, we will be doing, as I said, we will be doing a series of videos. The one we're going to do today is just basically a short introduction uh, to Peter. There will be, if you watch this and you find it interesting, I've checked him out. He is legit because you know there are people here who aren't, but Peter is a legit, legit company. Um, if you're interested in talking to Peter or just getting some advice, there will be a link in the description below with his uh, all his contact details, his website and everything like that. But for now, I'm going to ask, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about renting a condo today because uh, I, I've been, you know, I've been here a long time, uh, but Peter's actually told me things today that I didn't know. So if you're coming out here and you plan to rent a condo, we're just going to go through some various questions that uh, well, Peter will, it will tell us. And... Um, what, what, what sort of things would you say are important for people who want to rent a long-term condo out here? We're not talking about vacation properties, we're talking about long-term condos. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, after you find your location that's suitable for you, uh, you know, there's things that you have to do before you agree to rent a condo, and one of them is is, is looking at the contract, you know, right, right, the contract right, yeah, yeah. to lease. And, you know, people are always concerned about things like, how much deposit do I have to leave? Uh, you know, am I responsible for things in the condo? Do I have to pay for wear and tear? Can I sublet? Yeah. Uh, will the landlord do my TM30 for immigration? Let me, butt in, let me butt in there, the TM30, the TM30, that's really important. Why don't you just explain a little bit about what that is exactly and what the law is if you are renting a condo? Sure. So when you, when you rent a condo or when you stay in any hotel, uh, the owner or the manager of the hotel is responsible to report your address. It's a legal requirement. To, yeah, 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 it's a legal requirement. To report you living at that address to immigration. So once you're in the database of living in, at that address, it's very important because when you go to extend your visa, if you're not in there, then immigration is gonna ask you, uh, you know, where are you staying? Is this not the address that's on your application for right, your right. visa, right? Yeah. Why hasn't the landlord reported you? So then you'll have to go back to the landlord and ask him to do it and there's a small fine that would need to be paid. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the landlord's never rented before, mm. so they don't know how to do it. Right. Yeah, so there's ways that we can, you know, there's little tips that we can do to help you out with that. So how, how can, I mean, how can you check, just say for instance I rented an apartment, um, I wasn't aware about the TM30, the landlord didn't register it and I basically got caught out, I went down to immigration and, and, it, and it wasn't registered. What would be, uh, how would I get out of that? Yeah, well, the first thing you'd have to do is you'd have to make sure that you have the documents okay. from the landlord to, sub, you know, for so him you to submit that. the yeah. TM30 application. So it's basically, you know, your lease contract, a okay. copy of the landlord's ID card or passport if they're a foreigner. So you have to have a copy of the house registration of the condo. Uh, and then basically you go into immigration, it should be the landlord, okay. and the landlord will fill out the form get the receipt, which is the most important part, right, the receipt right. for the TM30. And then if it's not in the computer, uh, you can show it you know, to the immigration officer. Yeah, yeah, Here's sure. evidence that the TM30 has been done. Yeah. Uh, the second reason why you need the TM30 is for the first 90 day report ah, of your okay. address, right, right. right? So the first 90 day report of your address, you have to show them the TM30 receipt ah, okay. as proof that this is where you're actually is that staying. only Is that only after the first 90 days then? Yes, after the first 90 day report, 
and, and that's been, you know, you've given them the TM30 receipt, right. okay, then the next 90 day report and moving forward can be done either in person at immigration or on a line using okay. the application. Right. So just, you know, p this service that Peter's company offers, um, just before we get into all the pitfalls of renting an apartment, things that can go wrong, you've got an example of the way you helped out a foreigner. He had a problem with his condo and then he was a membership, he was a member of your um, sure. site and then you helped him out. So could you give us an example of what happened to him and how your company helped him out? Sure. So, so you know, one of the things that we're going to talk about today is sometimes when you rent a condo, you're dealing with an agency, yeah. okay, and you're not dealing with the owner actually. Sometimes you never even see the owner, no, no. right? So, so in a situation like that, often the agency will will be renting the condo to you on behalf of the owner. Yeah. And so, when you rent a condo, you have to be sure that if it's not the original owner of the condo, that they have permission to rent that condo to you. Because you had a case. Yes, where, we did. Yeah. What, what happened with that with that guy? That so so there was a, a guy that had been paying rent in a condo for, for almost one year and he found out that the money was being taken by the agent. Right, right. And so the the owner of the condo never even got the money. Oh wow. So that you know obviously we had to we had to come in and, and kind of uh, make sure that the that the tenant uh, had recourse not against the landlord mm. sorry not, not not against the owner but against the, the agency. The agency, yeah. Yeah, so we had to kind of fight for his rights on yeah, yeah, on yeah. behalf yeah, and I know I know of several other cases that Peter have told me about, and I know of one personally. I can't get into. It, I can't talk about it because it's ongoing. But there's a guy I met the other day. He's got some real big problems with the police over. Uh, well, I won't tell you what it's over, but he's got some problems. And I gave him Peter's number, and now Peter's involved with this guy, and you're gonna help him out with the police and all the rest of it. So why don't you just go through? Because you sent me a very interesting list earlier today, and when I looked at, it, I thought, wow, because a lot of these things I didn't know, but. Things to look out for when you're renting an apartment, because I mean, you, you know the obvious, like check the um, the electric, uh, how much they charge a unit. The government rate is what about four baht? I think so. Yeah. And some landlords are charging up to nine baht, but there's a bit more to it than that. So why don't you just talk us briefly through the points that you sent me this morning? Sure, sure. So one of the first points that uh, people are always worried about when they rent is uh, how much deposit do I have to leave? You know, often there's you know, uh, agencies and landlords that will ask for two months deposit. Mm -hmm. uh, plus you have to pay your first month's rent. So that's not a, something that people are fond of doing mm. because it opens up the risk of not getting their full deposit back. Sure, yeah, and yeah. so the higher your deposit is, the more uncomfortable you are yeah, course, as, yeah. a, as a tenant, right? Rule of thumb, it's generally about two months, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So they, they want to get two months. Uh, so we recommend that you offer one month deposit okay. plus the first month's rent. So like back home, yeah. first and last, and right? do, or what, first in security, which is basically what I mean. And do many of them accept that? Because in my experience, you know, when you, if, it's, if they want two months, they basically, you know, they won't budge on it. I mean, how do you, how do you negotiate You know, it, it depends on a few things. How badly do you want the condo? Mm -hmm. Is it really nice? Uh, it comes down to the furnishings inside. Sure. If there's a lot of luxury furnishings inside, then there might be some justification yeah. to ask for that second month's deposit. Right. Uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, but there's a new law from 2018 where the landlords aren't allowed to charge two months deposit. They're but, not. Yeah, but it depends on, on whether they fall into the category uh, to qualify for that law, which means they have to have five or more units okay. that they're renting out. But you told me there's a way they get around that. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a minute, right? But you know, what you want to do is you want to try your best to to not pay that second deposit, right. second month's so deposit. Second month's deposit. Okay. You know, I've never paid it since I've been here. Oh, really? I usually just walk away. Okay. You know, but if I liked it enough, maybe I would consider it. Yeah. And yeah. we'll talk about how that's possible okay. later. So you know, so even though the you know maybe the re the unit that you want to rent. Maybe this guy's only renting one condo. It's mm. his only condo. Right. Maybe he lives overseas and he rents his condo out when he's not here. Mm -hmm. Right. So that guy can go ahead and ask for that two months deposit. Mm -hmm. But you can use these guidelines that I'm going to talk about with you guys today uh, to try to have as close to these guidelines as possible yep. when you rent. Okay. So that way you're protected. Right. So that's the first thing. Try to try not to have to pay two months deposit. 
pay your first month's rent and then one month's security deposit. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second thing uh, is basically what we just talked about at the, at the beginning of the conversation. Okay. The, the agency. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So you know, make sure that you're renting the condo either legally from the owner of the condo or an authorized representative. And what that means is somebody that the owner of the condo has given power of attorney to. Fair enough, yeah. So how do you know if that's the case? Mm. Well, when you're given the lease contract, there should be a copy of the owner's passport or ID card. Right. There should be a copy of the house registration. And if it's not the original owner leasing it to you, there should be a power of attorney document that the owner signed yeah. okay. over to the agency that shows that they've got the, you know, they've got the authority, right? Yeah, 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 so that they've got the authority, right? Okay. And, you know, all, all you guys might be thinking, oh, this is really too difficult for me, right? Well, you know, if you use an, an authorized, I wouldn't say authorized, but a trusted condo agency or a real estate company, and you find one that you can trust, they usually handle all of these things for you. And, and I guess, like, if it was for me, from what you said, I would go in and ask them and say, do you do all this? And if they kind of beat sure. around the bush, I just walk out and go to somebody else. Yeah. Well, I think the point is, is if they look after the tenant yeah. and they look after the landlord in negotiating disputes, sure. ne negotiating the amounts on the contract mm. or the clauses in the contract, Makes sense. Uh, then it's good for both parties because then when that guy wants to rent another condo mm -hmm. or he wants to recommend them to one of his friends, then he'll recommend that agency. Sure, and sure. same goes for the, you know, for the, the condo owners, right? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. they have a friend that, that wants to rent their condo, they'll say, hey, go see this agent. Mm -hmm. he'll, take, he'll take care of you. They'll negotiate everything on behalf of you and you'll never have to worry, right? Sure. So it works for both sides, yeah. Sure. So, okay. Yeah, so just make sure that you you, you look at the, at the contract and you, 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 you look at the house registration and you make sure that the owner on that house registration matches the person that's signing the lease contract on behalf of the owner, right? Okay. All right. So here's here's number three. Um, you know, be, be, because you're in Thailand, you know, obviously Thai is the number one language here. Sure, yeah. So often lease contracts will either be in Thai language with a really bad English translation, okay. right? Yeah. Or they'll just be in English, but it's like already a bad translation yeah, from yeah, Thai, yeah. right? And so some people ask me the question or ask my legal team the question, of, you know, if I sign a contract in Thai and English, which contract is the, the legal one? Oh, maybe there's not both, right? Yeah, because maybe uh, the translation might be off, right? Mm -hmm. So what you wanna, what you wanna look at on, on your lease contract is you wanna make sure that if you've got two languages, one in Thai, one in English, you wanna make sure that that there's a clause in the contract that says which which version will prevail. Ah, if okay. there's a dispute, that's good information. Very important. Mm. So if they choose the Thai version, prevails. You better uh, take a look at that Thai contract with somebody that you trust that understands Thai mm. to make sure that uh, what you're signing in Thai matches the English translation. So that's okay. very important. Okay, but I mean, in reality, I mean, this is all great in theory, but in reality, you know what it's like. You go to rent a condo. Mm. Uh, you know, you like the condo. The landlord comes across as quite nice. You get the contract. It all seems okay. Does it, mm. it just seems like a, you know, a lot to go through. Does it? Would it not maybe put the landlord off actually renting to you when you're making all these demands to him? I know you want to cover yourself and stay safe mm -hmm. and not get ripped off. But you know, when you start demanding things, he might have ten condos and sure. everybody else just pays the deposit. They move in. They're happy. No problems. And and you start demanding this and that and all the rest of it. Doesn't it? You know, kind of well, cause its own problems. As yeah, it were. It, yeah, Peter. It could. And I think that what you have to understand is that most of us, when we come to Thailand. We use an agency. Yeah. So usually this is the things that you can talk about with the real estate agent. Yeah, see, I don't. And, and that's what I did, right? Yeah. So so when I rented my condos, I always talk to the agent. That's right. why I use an agent. I don't like to deal directly with the owner. That's good because thing. the agent takes care of everything. Right. So you just go through the contract with the agent. And if there's anything that, you, that you're not happy with, you just tell the agent, you highlight it, mm. and the agent will go back to the owner of the condo. Is this ah, okay? okay? Is this okay. okay? If they've got power of attorney, then they'll make the decision right off the bat, mm. unless it affects money. And then if it affects money, they'll have to go back and ask the right. owner, right? Right, right? Do people do this all of the time? No. Uh, and it's unfortunate because when we get you know, calls into our call center, my legal team answers questions like this every day. Mm. You know, people are, you know, I want to leave the condo early. Do I have to pay out 
the whole year mm -hmm. or can I get out of it can I sublet it all these things we get asked you know by mm. our members mm. right so I'm not just making all these things up these mm. are real real life situations mm. so you know I recommend that, that you use an agent why because the agent can give you all different choices yeah from yeah. different owners and they handle all of this for you right mm. yeah mm. So I, I've always kind of recommended that people go directly to the landlord. That's what I've always done. And the reason being is I've found in the past that agents, that, that's good points that you've made and you've got me thinking now, but I've always gone directly to the landlord because I'm the sort of guy, I'll go around um, quiet streets, I'll see signs and I'll just go in and speak to the condo owners or who's representing them. And I tend to get better deals like that. So am I doing it wrong? No, I wouldn't say you're doing it wrong. It's whatever you feel more comfortable with. I've never maybe, had a problem. Maybe you've never no, had a problem, no, no, right? No. So I just take a look at it, you know, from being like the devil's advocate, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I just see the problems. I don't see the good stories, sure, right? Sure, yeah. So like I take all of the examples that we have as being some of the issues right. that tenants have, you know, when they rent sure. in Thailand. And I say, okay, so to overcome those issues, if you use an agency, they can help you deal with some of the problems and issues that you might have before you need to call a lawyer, before you need to think about legal action and all that kind of stuff. I suppose it's the old, uh, the old saying, is it? It's all good until it goes bad. Yeah. Uh, and so far, I've been lucky. I haven't had it go bad. Um, I haven't had any problems, but mm -hmm. you certainly got me thinking today. So, so we talked about the lease contract being clear. Uh, now, you know, uh, the sorry, next good. point uh, is about termination. Okay, okay, so ending the contract. Yeah, so when you want to terminate your contract. Is this okay. early from the lease? Or if you uh, for a year? Uh, it, could be, it could be either either during the lease or it could be at the end at of the, the lease. At the end of the lease, right, okay. Okay, so, you know, by law now, um, if you want to terminate your contract before the end of the lease, if you're not one of those owners uh, that, you know, owns five or more condos, then you don't have to follow this rule. But this rule that they have out right now is that you, you know, for, for a, a reasonable cause, you can terminate the contract before the end. And they have to give you a deposit. And, and you give them, basically you have to give them 30 days notice. Okay, yeah. Okay, if, if the reason is, you know, if it's a re, for, for reasonable cause, right? Uh, now, about the deposit, you know, at that stage, you will have the, 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 you know, options on whether you get all the deposit back or you get a partial amount back, okay. you know, but before you might think I, I wouldn't get anything back, right? right, right. Terminated it before the end of the contract. Yeah, yeah, I've been very lucky again in that yeah. way. But. Yeah, so so one of the things we have to think about is making sure the contract is clear, right? Mm. Can I terminate the contract before mm -hmm. the end? If so, what do I get back? Do mm. I get back any of my deposit? Okay, so, f you know, as far as I'm concerned, when you rent a condo, and you, you exit the lease contract sooner than expected, mm. I don't think you should lose your entire deposit. No, you should get no. some of it back. So, so quick question, say somebody comes here, they're not really, um, you know, they don't know a lot about Thailand, they've maybe been here a couple of times on vacation, they decide to live here, they want to get a condo, and uh, they want to sign up a membership mm -hmm. for your services. Is this something they could just call up and say, look, I want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent this condo, can you talk me through it? Can you help me make sure I don't make any mistakes renting it? Sure. And this is a service you provide for the yeah. for the membership. So yeah, un under our membership, uh, the customer can, or the member can call in at any time, get legal advice on some of the issues that we've just talked about so far today, yeah. and they can actually send their contract in, oh, have wow. it reviewed first under the membership, and get the suggestions before they sign it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and just to be clear, guys, I mean, uh, Peter, uh, we're talking about condos today, the pitfalls of renting a condo. Uh, maybe on another series we'll do the pitfalls of buying a condo because we're not talking about buying today but Peter's legal firm they basically deal with all aspects of uh, law out here in in Thailand so although we're only talking about uh, condominiums uh, renting today we will be talking about different subjects every week I mean what other sort of just before we go on with this what other subjects are you, are you going to sort of help people with on, on advice what your company do? It could be anything. Uh, we do visa consulting. We don't handle too many of the visa cases, but we do visa consulting, mm -hmm. uh, marriage, divorce, uh, disputes over money. Uh, what about if people have issues with the police? Say somebody gets arrested for something. Oh, that's uh, something that, that we do a lot of. Um, Can you give us a, an example sure. of how you help people out? Sure. Um, there, was one, there was one guy actually here in Padia. Um, he was riding his motorcycle. And he actually, unfortunately, uh, ran into a pedestrian. Oh wow! And she, died. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and she was killed. Oh no! Really? Unfortunately, it was a really sad, wow, sad, sad, sad incident. Okay. And so, you know, so what our firm, you know, was able to do was take an emergency call in the middle of the night, right, right. you know, from the number outside of business hours, 
you know, deal with the police. Because he was arrested, obviously, yeah, on the scene. Deal with the police at that time. And then under the membership, you know, our, our members have a lot of coverage. But if they ever have to hire the, you know, Thai legal team yeah. to do something like on a case, they will get a pretty a, pr a pretty good discount of up to 25% off of the Okay, and you recommend these uh, people do you that? Uh, there are there are lawyers. Oh, they're your lawyers. Yeah, okay, because yeah, yeah. there's Thai and Frank basically, isn't it? No, it only only Thai lawyers. Oh, it's only Thai are, lawyers. Are allowed okay. to practice law. Ah, okay, okay, lawyers. I got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. So, so most foreigners in the in the legal sector are just here for advice uh, when they talk with their foreign clients, or they're like a shareholder in a, yeah, in a yeah. law firm right. and they do consulting. So, so you're kind of you're kind of a bit like an insurance company for people getting in trouble in a way, aren't you? You know, kind you of, yeah. rent your condo, get arrested, or you have some problem with a. I don't know. But this is what it is. It's basically insurance. Yeah, it's insurance. So if somebody, yeah. if somebody comes and stuff, it, you, they can call you up, 24-hour number, uh, and you can basically help them, advise them mm -hmm. the right way to go with it because of your yeah. experience, long-term experience yeah. in Thailand. Yeah. That's, and, and you're working with the Thais as yeah, well. Yeah, so huh? we, have a, well, we have a legal team that answers all of the phone okay. calls, right? Yeah. And so, you know, depending on what the topic of the call is, you might not get the same person. So right. we, have, okay. like, we have somebody for property, we have somebody for criminal, civil, and they, you know, okay, that's good to know. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, I might have to sign up myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anything else that's important to know on sure. the renting? Sure. So, so yeah. So back to renting condos, right? So often people are worried about when you live there for a year. Yeah. What are you responsible to fix? What are you responsible? Uh, what's the landlord responsible to fix? Right. So we want to make sure that the lease contract mentions things like who's responsible for normal wear and tear. And what would you class as normal wear and tear? Uh, maybe the you know some of the paint on the wall yeah, yeah. gets a mark on it. Okay. Uh, maybe you damage you know sorry not, not I, I guess not damage, but you know just just things like when you use the tap and then it starts to leak stuff, yeah, sure, stuff sure. like that yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so these are you know there, there's a line between you know damage and and, and regular wear and tear. Mm. So again the law states that that the landlord is not supposed to charge the tenant for normal wear and tear. Mm. But like I said before, if the landlord owns only one or two condos, he doesn't have to follow right, follow that right. law. So how, sorry to cut in again, yeah. I've got lots of questions. Mm. So how can somebody find this out? I mean, obviously you're an expert at this sort of thing, but for me, for instance, say I went to rent a condo and I said, right, okay, I want to know if this guy's got more than five condos, if he's only got one condo, broken English, little bit of tie. I mean, how, how do you... How do you find out the answers to this? So some guy comes here, he rents a condo, and he wants to know, am I covered by this? Has he got five properties or more? Because you were saying earlier, some of them, they put it in their wife's name, their sister's yeah, sure, name, yeah. to get out of this so they don't get covered by the law, right? Yeah, yeah. you know what? It's very difficult to yeah. do that, and you don't want to waste your time doing that. No, no. What you want to do is you want to use use these points that we're talking about today as a guideline to follow. Okay. Yeah. You might not win on every point, mm. but as long as you're comfortable with the end result, because at the end of the day, when you sign a lease contract, it's based on what both parties agree, right? Mm. So if you agree on something outside of these guidelines, mm. right, so be it. And, you know, and, and you might agree with these things because you really, really, really like the condo, sure, yeah. right? Or maybe there's other people that are wanting to rent that same condo and you want to get in and get that rented before someone else gets it, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, Thailand's opened up now, yeah. so during COVID, this would have been easy to take care of, but well, no, you know. No, I, mean? I found an apartment that I want to rent that I got for, they caught me 20,000 baht a month right yeah. in the middle of Sukhumvit, and I'm going to go back uh, this week to Bangkok, and I'm kind of guessing, um, they've got several apartments, but I'm kind of guessing it's not going to be 20,000 baht anymore, because like you said, it's opened up now, and uh, mm. is, what's the worst case scenario you've ever seen with somebody who's rented a, a condo and it's all gone tits up, as it were? Oh, or, uh, uh, I, 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 I would say the biggest problem that we get is when is when the end of the lease comes up and the landlord wants to keep the entire deposit okay and that it seems like the landlord is trying to get the tenant to pay for all the remodeling and refurnishing right. or whatever at the end of the lease and that's a real you know bad situation to yeah, be in because yeah. then they're going to like go through the condo with a fine tooth comb and try to blame you for everything so that's what we talk about you know when we talk about regular you know wear and tear as opposed to damage, right? So if, if you, um, I'm just trying to get this straight in my head. Mm. So if I went, let's just say I went to an agent, I said, I found this apartment. Well, he'll know because it'll be on his books, right? Mm. Do they handle all that for you? You don't have sure. to worry about all that. So sure. that's the they, agent. If the agent is reputable, they will step in and act on your behalf with the landlord. Right. You know, and if you're a member of Thai Legal Protection, 
uh, one of the benefits of the membership is also making a phone call on your behalf. Yeah. So before before you have to deal with any litigation or a, a Thai person can speak to a Thai. Like, yeah, a Thai person. We have someone that would call the Thai landlord. Uh, we have someone that would call a foreign landlord and try to resolve the dispute without right. any legal yeah. action or without any right. complaints to the authorities. You, right. Yeah. I mean, do you think this is just? Um, off the cuff question, do you think a lot of the Thai landlords who try to keep the deposit, they only do it because they think you're a foreigner and you don't know any different, you can't get any help, they wouldn't do it to a Thai? That's or? that's difficult to say, but I'm going to say that yes, that situation has, yeah. has, has happened before. Yeah. And you know, most foreigners just kind of, after, you know, they don't want the aggravation, walk away. so they just walk away. But sometimes it's a lot of money, mm. like, you know, when it's not COVID, Sometimes people are paying 40, 50, 60,000 baht per month in rent. Yeah, two so months if you have two months deposit, that's you know maybe 120,000 baht. Yeah. You don't want to have that. You get, basically, you don't want to lose that, right? So 4,000 US, isn't yeah. it? Something like yeah. that. Yeah, so, so that's why you know you have to keep a, a lot of these points in mind yeah, when you're sure. renting, right? Anything, so, anything? Yeah, so you know, I, I, do, I, I do have a, you know, quite a bit more, right? Okay. So, so what we want to do is, is we want to put somewhere in the contract, just to summarize, mm -hmm. that, okay, shouldn't be responsible for wear and tear and if any damage happens to anything in the apartment uh, and it wasn't your fault it just kind of doesn't work anymore because it's old yeah, yeah. right you shouldn't be responsible for of that, course right of course. so you, you got to have these things in the contract to make it very clear right. uh, as Peter mentioned before you want to make sure that you're paying the government rate for the utilities about four bars yeah it? so water and electricity it's gone up in November okay. because of the situation yeah, you, you know in russia yeah, and all yeah. that any right? idea how much it's yeah. going up to yeah i have to check at home because i just got a notice as well okay yeah so i you know I, I didn't take a look at it right so you just want to try to get paid the utilities at the government rate um if if you rent from a service department mm -hmm. they have that right to charge you an upsell okay you just have to decide whether you want to agree with it or not you mm -hmm. know what i mean it, you know that's a personal preference it depends on your usage right yeah. if, if you're a heavy user of say your AC and it's on almost 24 hours a day, you might not want to rent in a service department right. unless it's for only a short period of time. Of course, of course. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, so just make sure that you have the government rates. Um, now, um, when your lease ends, uh, this is a very important thing, okay, but when your lease ends, you don't want to exit the premises of the condo and have them come in later ah, to okay. inspect everything because then you don't know whether what they're saying is accurate or not. Okay. So, you know, you don't want to be forced to take photos of every little thing in the condo. So that way, if the landlord says after you've left mm. that, okay, this was damaged, and you say, no, it wasn't. Do you have yeah. any evidence? Yeah. Well, you can't, you're already gone. Unless you've got the photo. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what we recommend is, is a couple of days, or maybe even on the last day when you move out, the landlord comes in, insists that they come in, and walk through the apartment with you or the condo with you do an inspection and come to the settlement about what's going to be deducted from your deposit and if you're with an agent is that something they would get involved in uh, or not? well it depends if, if you rent directly if you rent it directly from the agent then they will do it oh, okay yeah okay. so most times it will be the agent that does that walk through right, with you. Right. Okay, that's, that's good. very 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 important right because we've had situations where where the tenant would say well I didn't break that it was, wasn't mm. like that when I left mm. but then mm. the, what can you do if you don't prove it now? No. Yeah, you, 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 you can't rip. Okay, okay. Now, uh, the next point, you know, when you leave your security deposit, you talked about two months or one month, right? Okay, well, when do you get that back? Mm -hmm. Okay, so by law, it's supposed to be seven days after you leave the condo. Yeah. But if the, if the person that, you know, if the owner of the condo has less than five condos, he doesn't need to follow it, right? right. So okay. if they don't agree to seven days, uh, what we suggest is you agree to to get your deposit back after the final utility bills are paid. Mm. So that way they can deduct it from the security deposit right, okay. after they're paid, right? Could be up to 30 days. And do you, do you find um, with landlords, do they do they try and uh, cheat people out the deposit or are most of them okay, they give it straight back? The average landlord is supposed to be okay, but like, like I said, I don't hear about all the times when the landlords give the deposit, you only hear the bad story. I only yeah, hear the yeah. bad story, sure, sure. so I can okay. only just tell you what we recommend that you do, right? right yeah, right, yeah, okay. exactly. So just make sure that uh, you, got, you know the final inspection is done. You make sure that you know when you're going to get your deposit back in the contract. It should say after this amount of days 
or when the final utility bills okay. are paid. If that should never go longer than 30 days. Right. Never. So, you know, make sure the contract is clear whether or not you can sublet. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, so if you went, I'll just cut in there quickly. Yeah. Basic scenario I rent a contract for a year. I'm going to go back to England for three months. My friend's coming out for a couple of months and say, rent my condo from me. Yeah. yeah. Or you or you're, you can't get out of your lease. So, okay. you want to get out of it. Ah, and so, okay. instead of instead of having a problem with the landlord, right, so you try to get a sublet, right? Okay. So just make sure that if that's something that you're interested in as an option, that you make sure that in your contract it states whether or not you're able to sublet or not. Right. Okay. okay? All right. Now, um, now, so, you know, in, in summary, you just want to make sure that, so you've got all these points here, but at the end of the day, the, the, we have two parties, the landlord and the tenant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, it basically boils down to what two parties agree on. So the lease contract is the most important thing, right? Right. Okay. right? So, um, you know, sometimes why would you agree on something outside of these parameters? Mm -hmm. Well, the main reason is that the, con the condo is in high demand. Yeah, yeah, you want yeah. the condo, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 exactly, right? Um, now, um, I guess I'd like to wrap up just on a couple of okay. points. So let's wrap up. Uh, on the legal uh, agency that deals with disputes okay. between landlords and tenants, right? So basically what that is, 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 is there's the consumer protection agency where tenants can make claims uh, or complaints against landlords. Okay. And then if it's a really serious complaint, uh, it can also go to the civil court. Right? Is that something you would do yourself or would you involve a third party? To do that? Yeah, so our legal team would would you know give all the advice on the dispute and the best way to resolve it and then if the member wasn't able to use our advice under the membership to, to resolve the dispute then they have the option to hire one of my Thai legal team to okay. take over the case and try to get their money back right okay yeah or partial money back if it's damages Got you. Got right you. Got you. yeah so so in other words we've got a very comprehensive membership but you know sometimes even though our goal is to have everything solved for the member under the membership, which is seven ninety five dollars per month, mm. I was uh, going to ask you Sometimes, sometimes it's just impossible to sort it out. Right. You know, if it's a visa issue, like an overstay problem, um, if there's any litigation in the court that has to happen, if, if, there, if, you know, if we have to go to the police station in person, mm -hmm. then obviously know, it's a separate there's, charge. There's yeah. going to be a separate so, charge, but they will get a discount. Yeah, sure. But can I just um, be clear on your membership charging? You said it's seven ninety five. Seven hundred and ninety five baht per month. So that in US dollars is about. Well, it's it fluctuates anywhere from twenty five to fifteen, depending on the exchange rate. Yeah, yeah. so twenty dollars a month. Yeah, like that. so I, I, I guess yeah, that's I guess a, probably was, uh, eighteen yeah. pounds a month. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's it's good to have that um, protection, you know. But what happens if somebody, for instance, isn't a member? They have a problem and they try to be clever and think, well, I'll I'll join this guy's site today because I've got this problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that something? Okay, well, yeah, it happens all of the time because, you know, there are some people that will buy insurance, yeah. such as, you know, travel insurance or this type of thing before something happens. But obviously, a lot of us don't think ahead like that. No. So what we'll do is we'll, is we'll only think about this, something like this when we actually have the problem. When you get arrested yeah. by the police. We don't have any policy no. about not doing sort of this thing. We have two types of members. One are long-term expats mm -hmm. and one, you know, tourists, basically, okay. right? The so long-term expats normally keep the membership. The tourists will, will, will normally get it before they come. When they leave, they'll cancel it. When they come back again, they'll get it again. Okay. Yeah. And everything can be controlled by the member within their profile. Right. So okay. they just log in, cancel, reactivate. So we're not really strict on that kind of thing. No, and just to yeah. be clear again, guys, I mean, we're not... You know, it, Peter obviously can't, uh, we're on a time restriction, so we can't get into all the details of his membership and his company. But if you are interested and you want to know more, I'm not getting anything out of it. There's no sort of kickbacks or anything like that. I'm just giving this um, information to help you guys out. So, uh, And it's good information for me. I've learned a lot, actually, uh, from Peter, just having uh, lunch with him earlier on today. Mm -hmm. um, but all the information on Peter's company, what they do, as I said at the beginning of the video, there is a link in the description underneath. If you click that, that will take you through to... Uh, is it a website they'll go to? Yeah, it goes directly to our website. Yeah, yeah I, I, and you can read up, and if you need to call Peter or send him an, an email, he can put you in touch with whoever you need to deal with if it's not Peter himself. So, um, Peter, are there any more? Uh, is that it on the condo, the renting? Uh, no, yeah, I think that's it. You know what? Uh, the last point was the TM30. 
but yeah, we covered it in the we covered it in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. And, and just to be clear, because I, I wasn't, I didn't know about this, but I kind of half forgot about it. The TM30, when you go into somewhere, you you have if you're a long term, um, you're on a long term visa, you you have to, the police have to know where you're living in. You said it's a landlord's responsibility, yeah, right? Or the hotel's responsibility. Right. Yeah. Well, we so know the hotels. Yeah. There was no, you know, the big issue was with the Airbnbs. Okay. Because yeah. they don't want to do it, and the uh, Airbnbs are kind of treading on a on a gray area yeah, of the yeah, law. Yeah, of they're not really supposed to be renting short term, like two weeks, right, right, day, right. two days, right? Because they're not licensed. To do okay, that. so you've just brought up a good point here, because I know a lot of guys, when they come here, they'll come for a month, they'll book into an Airbnb, or they'll, they'll book into something through bookings.com. Mm -hmm. So have you got any recommendations? Say I had a friend comes here for a month, mm -hmm. he's booking an Airbnb, based on what you've just said, what should he do? Well, if it's under 30 days, or during the like you know there's also a visa on arrival for people yeah, like, like yeah. say for uh, India, 30 right? days normally yeah it's worth 15 to 30 days right you don't really need to worry about it too much okay yeah because you're not going to be extending your visa so you know all of the liability falls back onto the landlord okay so you're but, here for two months you yeah. come in for a month you extend for 30 days then you, that's when you have to worry about it because right. you, the, 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 the immigration officer will look in the computer to see if you're registered staying uh, somewhere okay. and it matches the address you put on your visa application so what should somebody do when they uh, if well go earlier so that way if you have a problem you have time to sort it out Okay. And number one, you can get your landlord to do it for you, or number two, you can use an agent. And I believe you have a really good agency that you that you, that, that helped you one time yeah, that would yeah. be able to actually help them out yeah. to do a TM30 if they had a problem. That was the uh, the visa lady, Lana. Yeah. She, yeah. She, she'll, she'll handle all that as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, they're they're really good points. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to try and have a, a regular series of these types of videos with Peter. Mm -hmm. um, his his firm deal with a lot of things here, a lot of problems for expats. You know you have the language barrier as well, that doesn't help. I've been very lucky during my time in Thailand, I've never really had any real issues. When I've rented an apartment, I've gone straight to the landlord and I guess it's just good luck mm -hmm. that I haven't had any serious problems. But, you know, you've kind of got me thinking now, you know, uh, maybe you've, you've flipped me over. Um, yeah, guys, if you know, when you watch this video, if you can think of a subject that might interest you with regards to what Peter and I are going to discuss in the future, give, you, give us your ideas in the comments. And I don't mean send me questions to ask Peter for your um, individual needs that's not what this is about it's just general information advice so if you've got a subject that you'd like to hear about like buying a condo a marriage visa uh, buying a car insurance anything like that leave it in the comments and then I'll discuss it with Peter the next time I'm here and I thought we were lucky today Peter because there's no excess noise but it's, yeah. it sounds like one of the bars is just opened up and whacked on the old speaker so perfect timing so Peter uh, anything you'd like to add before we Go? No, just uh, thank, thank you, Peter, for having me. Yeah, you're today. welcome. Yeah, and uh, you know, I hope that we can you know, get some good information to your subscribers and to your viewers. Well, you've watched several of my videos, so you yeah. know a, a lot of what I do. I try to offer advice to people who are coming out here for the first time, things they might not know. With Peter on board now, if we can do these uh, regular monthly videos, hopefully you'll learn a lot more, mm -hmm. as, as I am at the moment. So, Peter, thank you very thank much, you, and I'll see you probably in another month to do sure. another one. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks a lot. Cheers, uh, I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for watching this and uh, stay safe.